So with that, are you ready? I'm ready whenever you are. Yes, okay, it's 11, so I guess we should start. So we're happy to have our second session, Tal Ornstein from TU Berlin. Uh, and what, what is WILS? <laughs> it's the Weistress Institute. Ah, I see. Okay, great. So uh, from Berlin, uh, we will continue talking about aging for specific models. Please start. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the invitation. And uh, thank you all for, uh, for staying, uh, wherever stayed. Um, yeah, so I'm going to tell you about um, um, a specific model, as Jean Dominique pointed out, uh, and that's the oconnell yaw model um, in intermediate disorder. And now, um, okay, let me explain in a, in a second, but let me first remind you uh, a bit of uh, what Jean Dominique already explained. So we uh, consider the, uh, the the stationary KPZ equation, so the call-op solution. Uh, which is a solution of the stochastic heat equation in dimension one with multiplicative noise, starting from the exponent of uh, the two-sided Brownian motion, then you take the logarithm of that. Um, and uh, then our main result uh, for, the, for the KPZ uh, equation was that it satisfies aging. So if we, we call the uh, space-time correlation function of the KPZ equ equation, our KPZ equation, then if you plug in um, a fixed X and Y, and you take two time points that have a fixed uh, ratio A for uh, A larger or equal than one, then as T goes to infinity, this converges to the this aging function, which is explicit. And you see here the, the exponents of the, of the KPZ class, okay? And as Jean-Dominique uh, mentioned, there are uh, many models that converge with scale to, 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 this, uh, to this equation, um, um, also to the KPZ uh, fixed point in a different regime. And uh, our talk today is going to be about one specific models. One specific model, this is the uh, oconnell yaw model. And this is a model of directed polymers in Brownian uh, environment. Okay, and um, I only, already want to mention in this, at this point that this talk is going to be uh, technical. Okay, I'm, I, what I want to do is essentially give you uh, uh, essentially the whole proof or the main steps of the proof uh, for this model. And so there is a lot of context and I'm, I cannot uh, um, explain everything, but uh, the main idea of the proof is going to be uh, to use the Lagrange method. Um, and if you are familiar with, uh, with the Lagrange method, then it's going to be uh, easier for you uh, to follow. But if you don't, I hope that one thing that you can gain from this talk is an explanation of more or less what is the, uh, the Lagrange method and how to apply it, okay? Um, okay, so let me uh, briefly de describe the model. So. Um, we start from uh, the point-to-point -point partition function. So this is going to be a directed polymers uh, in Brownian environment model. So there is a polymer measure uh, that I'm going to give it to you in terms of the partition function. So what is going to be the partition function? What you're going to do is you, you're going to take IAD two-sided Brownian motions, BK. And then if you fix uh, a parameter beta larger than zero, or larger and equal uh, than zero, and uh, integers m smaller than n and uh, reals s smaller than t, then you define this partition function z beta from this, uh, you can think about it as like space time point sn to space time point tn by taking the integral over the simplex of, of, of this uh, object here. So what's written here is the exponent of beta times increments of these, uh, these Brownian motions. So th these are increments. And uh, you are on the simplex and this simplex is, um, is between S and T. Okay, so uh, you, you are uh, partitioning your, uh, uh, so let's take here S equals zero and M equals zero, for example. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so you partition uh, the, the time interval ST 
um, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to different intervals, okay? Um, uh, so this is an object, so this partition is an object in the simplex, and then you take uh, increments of, uh, of your Brownian motions um, on every interval, okay? So I hope this is, uh, uh, okay, so this is just a notation of the increment. Um, for the first interval over here, and this is uh, the last interval over here. And by uh, um, by definition, we just say that this SM is defined to be uh, S, the left points, and this uh, SN is defined to be T, the right end point, and you take an integral over all other variables between, okay? Um, Okay, you will you will understand better, I hope, uh, as as we go along. Um, so, uh, one thing that you can do already at this stage is to uh, so that was a point-to-point -point partition function is to define the stationary uh, partition function, and the stationary partition function is 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 is, is as follows. So what you uh, what you will do is you add the parameter theta. And you add an independent two-sided Brownian motion D0. And now if you take the point-to-point -point partition function, okay, from uh, 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 time point S to uh, Tn, um, and you integrate it with weight given by the exponent of this uh, two-sided Brownian motion with these parameters, then um, this uh, gives you uh, a caricature of, 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 uh, of a stationary model. So if you take the logarithm of that, this is going to be a space-time stationary. And you can prove that essentially the proof is going to be similar to the way you prove it for the stochastic heat equation, and uh, which is similar to Ed Edwards Wilkinson. Okay, so it's always the same thing. Uh, you're going to look at at increments and you're going to see that they solve a certain equation, it's going to be the same equation. And um, maybe I want to mention already in this point, so as, as, as Jean-Dominic already pointed out, so you should uh, think about this as something that will rescale. Um, if you just look at the diagonal outside of the diagonal, this is going to be to rescale to the stochastic heat equation, starting from the narrow wedge initial condition and here is go you're going to integrate it with respect to uh, uh, an independent two-sided Brownian motion. So, and these are just for rescaling, okay? So this is going to converge to, um, to the stochastic heat equation in, in stationarity. And this is how you do it. Okay, so you take your uh, beta to zero. Yeah. Uh, so you do not assume any uh, Gaussianity so far, right? You don't have your mothers. Do um, not no, no. have. I, I do. So these you are do? increments. Of, I, this, these are increments of Brownian motion. That's the only Gaussianity. Okay, so this is ah. um, an exponent of uh, independent uh, increments of a Brownian motion. I see, but the model is yeah. Okay, let me see. No. I will no. wait. No, it's not. Okay. Um, so. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, maybe maybe since I'm in, in this slide, um, I just want to mention that you see, uh, by definition, we have this, uh, we take this Brownian motions and we deterministically pick the next one um, every, 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 every uh, interval. So we have this essentially a drift here. And if you would like the, this object to be scaled to something like uh, something that has a fluctuation, then we need to take something be scaling around the diagonal. And the fluctuation should be something of order square root. So uh, this is how you rescale it. And as you see, so if you're now taking your uh, beta to zero together with n, you, you call it beta n, n to the minus uh, one, one over four, and theta n is going to one in this in this with this relation. So this is uh, beta n squared, n to the minus one half. And you are looking at the diagonal, um, and you uh, uh, take the fluctuation of square root of n around it, okay, with x, um, and you normalize then a result by uh, our quote of Gregorio. 
uh, is, you know, is here. And uh, Jeremy Castell and, and Daniel Remenik, and also another uh, result uh, with Milton Hara by him, um, is telling you that this converges to the stationary stochastic heat equation, okay, in the, the space of uh, continuous function, or, uh, weekly. So, um, and this is uh, okay. This is what we what 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 we expect to happen. So that's uh, that's great. Um, and what uh, what we prove in, in this uh, uh, with respect to that is that now if you take the um, space time uh, correlation function of the logarithm of, of that rescaled stationary O'Connell uh, uh, process, okay, um, then um, taking n to infinity first and then t to infinity with uh, this uh, uh, aging uh, relation that we had fix x and y and take the times to be of, of, uh, of ratio uh, a fixed, then this, uh, the limit is going to be the, the, the KPZ uh, uh, aging function. And well, this is somehow you can say that this is uh, when n goes to as, as n, after taking n to infinity, we see aging for this model. And in fact, we have something stronger. So we have a convergence of the correlation function, the space time correlation function. Um, uh, okay, and then this is just taking t to infinity uh, with this uh, with this fixed uh, relations. Okay, so this is the, the actual result. So we're going to show that, um, 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 we're going to show that, that you have a, a, a convergence of the space-time correlation function of the rescaled O'Connell Yaw model that's stationary. Um, and now um, remember that uh, uh, we had convergence in stationarity. And so, so we have a convergence in law and, and we had stationarity. So we can just reduce ourselves if we want to prove the, the correlations and just reduce ourselves to proving the convergence of the variances, right? By the uh, covariance to covariance reduction that Jean Dominique mentioned. So it's enough to show that for every T um, and uh, P, this family, the logarithm is uniformly integrable, uniformly on compacts uh, with respect to the space uh, parameter. Okay. And now, since um, the logarithm function to the p is bounded on r, yeah, is bounded by uh, by a constant depending only on p times z or plus one over z. Okay, it's uh, going uh, uh, slower to to infinity than. Uh, in both, right? Then uh, it's enough to prove that you have actually that the family of uh, Zn st is uniformly integrable, the first moment of that and the first negative moment of that. Okay? That's also, we reduce that to proving two uh, moments. Um, the upper moment is actually easy. So you can go and compute. And what you can uh, show is that this is bounded by the exponent of a constant of t plus the absolute value of x. This is not a big deal. Um, and you can also, after I'm just going to show you what I want to show you, you can also deduce that from what I'm going to show you, but it's much easier, it's, it's direct. That's not the problem. The big problem um, is the lower, is the reciprocal, okay? So you would like to prove that for any t and a, uniformly on all x um, um, of, uh, of modulus smaller than a and all n, uh, the expectation of uh, the, the, the minus one moment of our rescaled uh, stationary partition function is, uh, is bound. Okay, so that's the main point of, uh, of, 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 of this talk. So we would like to prove this. Okay, so we reduce the whole problem to proving this negative moment. Okay, so I gave you uh, one uh, presentation of the rescaling, of the stationary rescaling, right? So uh, remember with this uh, beta and theta. There is another way to do it, and it's going to give you exactly the same partition function. What you can do, and for me, it's actually more natural, but uh, anyway, uh, what you can do is you can rescale the point-to-point -point partition function immediately. 
Okay, so this is the rescaling. So again, you take the diagonal and and you um, and then you uh, 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 yeah, then you see fluctuations of uh, square root of m. I see Norm uh, Norm's name on on my slides. I don't know, but uh, anyway, and uh, this is the rescaling constant. So uh, if you do that, you can, uh, what you need to, uh, to expect and you can prove is that this point-to-point -point partition function is going to converge to the point-to-point. -point, so it's going to converge to the uh, stochastic heat equation with the narrow wedge initial condition. Okay, so the uh, mass a one on, on, on this point. And, um, and then uh, if you just pick the, uh, uh, this y, with a, with a mass which is given by an independent rescale two sided Brownian motion, this should converge to the stationary stochastic heat equation. And indeed, um, you can present this rescaling just by writing this down like that. So the point is that you have this point to point partition function rescale. And uh, if you do that, what you can uh, first. Uh, uh, and compute is that, okay, you have this uh, representation, but another point is that the first moment of, of this uh, rescaled point-to-point -point partition function is bounded by the heat kernel, okay? Uh, so it's uniformly uh, uh, bounded on compacts. Okay. Oh, what's C again in the first part? What is P? Yes. What is P, P, T minus P? S, what is, yeah, in the first fact, what is little p? Ah, the, the, the heat kernel. So it's, it's, it's one over square root of two pi uh, T minus S, E to the minus X minus Y squared divided by two. Okay, so okay. Okay, so, um, right. And that's, that's our key estimate. So let me present the key estimate. So the key estimate is for the point-to-point -point partition function. So uh, here it is. So the if you fix T and A, okay, we can find this constant that are going to depend on these guys. So that if you look at the point-to-point uh, -point partition function at time T, uniformly, uh, in, in the distance of y and x to be uh, in this compact, so smaller than a, you can prove that uh, the probability that it's smaller than, than the constant e to the minus u as a Gaussian tail. Okay? So it's not too small. Um, and in particular, when you have such a thing, you know, if you take the minus, uh, mm -hmm. this to the minus one, and this gives you a, um, a, a, a bound on the, on the tail, right? So it gives you that for any uh, P, you have any, you have any negative moments, okay? That's the point. So this is much stronger than that, okay? Um, right, if you compare it, because we have a U here and a U square here. And this is the proof, but I'm, I'm sure that you can convince yourself in that. And that's, this is all we need, okay? So we wanted to prove that the point-to-point -point partition function of the stationary, uh, uh, the stationary scale partition, partition function is, is uh, as a finite, uh, as a bounded uh, negative first moment. Um, and here I'm giving you a result about the point-to-point -point partition function. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to reduce yourself from the stationary partition function to the point-to-point -point partition function. And uh, using the presentation, the last presentation, this is uh, um, conceptually should be, should be clear or that it has at least a chance. Okay, so let's assume without loss of generality that uh, X is zero, okay? Um, because uh, if we can, you know, if we can, we can just redo it for any X if you want. Um, and uh, then we have this presentation, okay? This is what I, I explained. So you see, we have these two parts here. So this is the stationary rescale partition function. We have the first part is some exponent of a rescale two-sided Brownian motion, heat positive. The second part is the point-to-point -point partition function. And now we are fixing T and N 
So let's forget about them that it will not confuse us. Okay, so let's call this Wx, W that we remember that it is coming from a Brownian motion, that we can do things uh, well, control well, and this Z is the point-to-point -point partition function. So the first thing that you, want, you, you, you realize is that this is positive, this is non-negative, then the integral from minus infinity to something and positive is definitely larger than the integral from minus a to zero for any positive a. So taking the minus one, we have a lower bound, okay? And now uh, you realize that uh, your W is positive, so you can uh, just treat it as, um, as, as a weight. So you can use Jensen. Okay, so you use one time Jensen and uh, you pick up uh, uh, R to the minus two and R is this normalizing constant with respect to the weight, okay? Um, a Cauchy Schwarz, so you get rid of this, uh, this part. So you have an R to the minus four. Remember that that came from a Brownian motion. We scaled in the right scaling. We don't care. So we reduce to this, to, to bound in this. Okay. Uh, then let's do a Cauchy Schwarz inside and Cauchy Schwarz outside. Okay. And what we're, we're able to do now is to get another estimate in terms of our Brownian motion. Okay. It's an integral of this squared and the integral is squared, but uh, this is not a big deal. Um, um, so this is bounded. And then we finally arrive to uh, controlling this negative moment of, of Z, uh, um, uh, the point-to-point -point partition function. And now again, uh, if you write this down, you can do another Jensen, okay? So this is a proof with a lot of Jensen, Jensen's uh, here. And uh, you realize that what you're left with is this uh, integral when you have here a negative fourth moment of the point-to-point -point partition function, which we know how to control. Okay, so we wanted the negative, uh, the first negative moment of the stationary uh, uh, model, and uh, we reduced it to the negative fourth moment of the point-to-point -point model. Uh, it's pricey, but we have it for, for, for every, uh, you know, for any any moment that we want, so it's it's not a problem. So this is how you go, how, how you uh, reduce yourself to the uh, point to point partition function. So our proof is now well, uh, the theorem is going to follow completely just by proving this concentration for the point to point partition function. And um, what we are going to do is going to be uh, to use the uh, Kalagans method, as I mentioned and uh, related work to, to the, 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 uh, the strategy that, that we take here. is first two papers by Talagrand himself um, um, on, on spin glasses uh, on these two, two models uh, presenting the, this idea. Um, for directed polymers uh, models, so in fixed temperatures, so this beta is not going to zero in fixed endpoints, so it's, uh, it's not uh, uh, uniformly on compact sets, okay? It's just fixed. Uh, you have uh, this paper by Carmona and Hu um, on Gaussian environments and by Gregorio on bounded environments. And there is this paper of, by Rovira and Tindel uh, that here uh, they use the continuum uh, uh, setting, but still with fixed endpoints and fixed temperature. And in the intermediate disorder, namely beta n is going to zero. Okay, remember it was n to the minus one quarter in our case, and locally uniformly in the endpoint, what we want. So uh, we have this paper by uh, Gregorio um, on the disc in discrete time. So our um, our proof essentially follows the idea, the guidelines of, 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 uh, of the proof by Gregorio, um, but we need to, uh, to explain how to move from the discrete to the continuum. And uh, this, is a, this is a nasty business that I'm going to hide under the carpet, but I'm going to at, at least uh, point out um, what one need to do, okay? It will be clear to you. Um, so, um, yes. So we are uh, going to work on the point-to-point -point partition function. Before we do that, 
let us um, explain, um, let us build some settings to, to work in, in Telegram's network. So let's specify our uh, uh, probability space. So omega is going to be the space of all uh, continuous uh, functions from uh, the natural numbers times the alpha line to the reals, okay? And then we are going to take uh, P to be the standard Wiener measure on omega. So what you think you need to think about it is just um, if you vary over uh, the, the natural parameter, then you just see IID Brownian motions with respect to P, okay? And um, okay, and now I'm going to define the Cameroon Martin space. So it's uh, what is the Cameroon Martin space? It's going to be all of these ages in omega, so that they have a finite age one norm. What is the age one norm? Age one uh, squared norm is going to be um, you're going to sum up over over k. And you're going to take the, the, the L2 norm of the derivative of H in coordinate K. Okay. Um, the time derivative of H, so if we treat this parameter as time, the time derivative of H squared, take the integral from zero to infinity and then sum over K. That's a definition, okay. Um, the, the, this triple, Omega P and H1 is called the standard Wiener space. Um, and let me, if you're not familiar with any of this, let me give you just a small intuition maybe. Um, so let's think just for the, for the intuition um, that we don't have this Z plus here. Okay, so we have just the Wiener measure on R plus, we have just a Brownian motion, one Brownian motion. What is clear is that, um, you know, the, the time derivative of Brownian motion is not in L2, okay? It, it doesn't have, so this, this, this thing, uh, this mo this, the, the time derivative has no uh, finite L2 uh, 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 norm, right? Um, so the probability of this H1 is actually zero with respect to the, uh, to the Wiener measure. But however, now if you take a Brownian motion and uh, you add to it an H, so Brownian motion B plus H, this is going to be sometimes absolutely continuous with respect to, uh, to your Brownian motion, right? That's the Gersano theorem. And Gersano theorem is telling you that the Radonikodin derivative is going to have this, this type of energy. So we're going to see that um, in the formula. And, and essentially this H1 is telling you um, what, what are the possible ages that you can shift your Brownian motion with so that uh, you're going to still be absolutely continuous, okay? And um, this gives you also, can give you also a notion of distance. Um, so this is the Cameroon Martin distance. So if you now have a set A of, of, of path, okay? Um, you're going to uh, define the distance from A to a certain path B in omega by, by the following. So you're taking your, your, your B and you're looking for an H in H1 so that if you sum them up, you fall into your uh, event. And you take the infimum of the, of the H1 norm of this H. It's essentially somehow the, the, the smallest price that you priced in, this den, in terms of this density that you need to pay in order uh, to fall into, into A. Okay, this is a technicality uh, for now. And we're just going to, to see it as just uh, something, some, just the right setting to use. Uh, because what is great about, about this, uh, this setting is the following uh, Talagrand's lemma. And Talagans lemma is telling you that um, for any positive delta between uh, zero and one, um, you can find the constant depending on delta only between zero and infinity. So that for any U and any measurable set of, of, of paths in omega that has a probability according to the Wiener measure, which is uh, uh, larger than delta, 
then the distance function with respect to A is going to deviate from, from this constant um, with a Gaussian tail. Okay. And uh, okay, so uh, Talagrand proved, uh, proved that lemma in the uh, 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 finite dimensional uh, setting. So here it's, it's an infinite dimensional object, right? We have this, okay, many, uh, it's infinite dimensional. And uh, in all, the, the idea of the proof is to adapt the, uh, the proof to the Malevan calculus setting. And okay, I'm not going to explain, but I just want to uh, to mention that the point is that what what you what you are used dramatically in the proof is the fact that for a Lipschitz function of, of n uh, independent uh, normal uh, random variable, you have a Gaussian tail, okay, uh, uniformly in the in the in the Lipschitz uh, constant essentially, and, and the and the notion of norm that you're using. So you need to use something like that. So you need to, un to understand what, what does it mean to be Lipschitz in, in this space. And it means that you need to um, essentially to, to bound the Malyavan derivative of this, uh, of this uh, distance function. Okay, well, this is all I want to say about this. For us, we can just use it as, as, um, as, as a black box. Okay, this is very, fairly general. And this is the first step in Talagrand's lemma. So you have this, uh, this setting that gives you uh, uh, Gaussian tails for a certain distance function. And the, um, okay, I will explain later what is the second part of, of, uh, of, uh, of Talagrand's method. Um, and uh, maybe, I, maybe I'll, I can already mention that the second part of Talagrand's method is going to, to be to use that in order to connect the, the the objects that you that you want to estimate to a this to that distance function, and then you can somehow extract the the Gaussian uh, uh, bounds from um, from that distance function to what you want to prove. So first, um, yeah. So let's try to 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 understand better what we have here. Um, so. Uh, the first uh, observation is that you can write a point-to-point -point partition function. This relates to uh, uh, Naomi's question uh, 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 from before, uh, how does it look like, right? So what you can do is uh, you can write the point-to-point -point partition function as an, from a time t and, uh, and, and, and uh, space uh, point n um, as, e to the t, the expectation of the exponent of beta times some energy on uh, um, a Poisson process x, and that starts at one and end, end the time t at n. Okay, and this energy is going to be nothing more than uh, you just take this this integral, this time integral with respect to these uh, Brownian motions. So um, what you need to think about that, so let's, uh, let's understand why this is the case. So what is written here? This is just the increments of these Brownian motions and this Poisson process is you know, jumping um, um, one by one in the integers, right? So, so you see here increments of Brownian motion one after another, and you start from one and you end at n. So this is, and these are independent Brownian motion and uh, you have this uh, Poisson process here. So except, except for the normalization. So remember that the point to point partition function, we just took the integral over the simplex. We didn't have any normalization. And here we have a Poisson process. So there is a normalization. So we need to pay a price and you can compute and you see that this is what you, what you pay. Okay. Um, good. So, uh, yeah, so now we can, uh, we have this presentation. Another object that, 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 that we're going to use is the overlap. So if we have two realizations of this Poisson process, we can write the overlap of X and X tilde by the time integral of the, of the overlap of the indicator that they, are, they have the same value, okay? Um, good. And now uh, there are two ele elementary identities that you can check now when you have that. 
um, you can check what for every T and N, what is the expectation of the point to point partition function. And now if you think about this uh, already here, right? Let's, let's do it together before I'm telling you what it is. Okay, so this is a Gaussian random variable, right? Of, uh, of variance T. Okay, so it's, it's essentially, and it's uh, independent of the, of the Brownian motion, right? So, because it's always T. Um, so um, yeah, so what we have here, we have an exponent of beta times the Gaussian random variable, okay? And we know that, that we know the, the, the moment generating function of the, of the Gaussian random variable. So here is the expectation. You are just left with this probability that the Poisson process at time t is in n. And you can do something similar for the second moment. There you need two independent copies of, the, of, of your work. And then this is reduces to these overlaps. Okay. So you can divide. And look at the times that they overlap and the times that they are not. Uh, all of these increments are independent, so you can um, um, uh, just present that over the over the intervals. And uh, the overlap time until time t, um, the time that you are not overlapping until time t equals t minus the overlap time. So you can write everything in terms of the overlap. And uh, just the computation gives you that. So now if we are taking the, 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 the second moment of, uh, of Z divided by uh, the square of the first moment, so this, this divided by the square of that, you see that uh, this cancels and you are just left with the expectation of two uh, over two independent copies of uh, the Poisson process conditioned to end both of them at N at time T and we have an exponent of beta squared times the overlap. Okay, so we have, an, we have this uh, presentation. Good. Um, and what is good can about this? Uh, yes. So what, is, what is the overlap again? What is LT? LT is, is this? just, this is just uh, the time they spend on oh. the same place. Remember that they walk, they they walk, they jump from zero from one to n, and you are taking all, you are summing all the time uh, intervals that they intersect. I see, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. okay, and now um, good, and now um, um, since these are Poisson processes, the the right rescaling, and uh, I'm, I I wrote here the right rescaling, but uh, it should you should convince yourself. Uh, that this is true. What is nice about Poisson process is that we know how to rescale it, and we can prove, uh, uh, you know, local limit, uh, local uh, CLT, and the right rescaling. That this is the right rescale. Okay. This is the right rescaling. Okay. So if you want to compare uh, this guy, if you want to compare space, uh, you know, space and time, so the the, the endpoints and then the space points, you can do this, and with this rescaling. And remember that beta n equals n to the minus quarter. What you can prove that uniformly for any a and t, uniformly um, over the interval minus a a, okay, you have this uh, uh, um, exponential uh, exponential moment um, of this object. So the point is that this is uh, this overlap. Um, has to be rescaled by divided by n by square root of n in order to be in the right scaling. And after after it does that, it will converge to uh, essentially the local time of uh, of um, the Brownian motion. Okay, so uh, right because you can uh, I hope it's clear that uh, the overlap is uh, you can think about it. So if you take the let's just uh, well I don't have a lot of time but I just just I'll do it fast. So if you take uh, two independent copies of, of, of this Poisson process that end at n, um, if you, uh, yeah, so if you look at these time intervals, you can uh, you can look at the, the, the difference of the Poisson processes, okay? So what you what you realize that you can present it as, 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 a, as a continuous time random walk with a rate two jump, okay? And this is, 
uh, becoming that uh, the, the local time of, of that. Okay, I hope this is somehow uh, makes sense to you. But uh, then you have this uh, estimate and uh, using a Cauchy Schwarz, you get this estimate as well. Okay, so this is the estimate that, uh, that we have, which is uh, uniformly uh, in X. Okay, let's keep that in mind and continue. So uh, yeah, so now, now we are coming to what we, what we really want to do, right? We want to connect um, the partition functions to the distance that, that we had from before. Um, and it turns out that we can do it using also the, 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 uh, this uh, overlap uh, time. Okay. So, so let's see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the environments that I'm using because I'm going to compare two different environments. Okay. And uh, this is, uh, I'm going to define it to be the polymer measure. Okay, so this is the expectation with respect to this uh, weight and this is the normalizing constant. Okay, and in the environment uh, B. And now the lemma is telling you that if you have two uh, environments, B and B bar with a difference H in H1, then you can bound below the logarithm of the partition function with respect to B by the logarithm of the partition function with respect to B bar minus beta the square root of this uh, uh, expected uh, uh, overlap uh, with respect to, uh, to B bar times the norm of H. Okay, let's do it fast, but I can, I can show it to you, it's very simple. So uh, what is the uh, partition function with respect to, uh, to B? It's, as I explained, it's the, uh, it's e to the t, um, this expression with the expectation on the Poisson uh, process, right? And uh, since uh, you have b is the sum of b bar and h, um, this is linear. You remember the definition, it was just the integral of db, right? So this is just linear. So you can write it as, as a sum of, of the two. And now by the definition of this uh, uh, polymer uh, measure with respect to B bar now, you see that this equals exactly that, equals definition. And then we use Jensen, our, our good old Jensen again for this, uh, for this function. And we have that this is uh, larger or equal than uh, this uh, partition function with respect to B bar. And then we have an exponent of beta times this uh, uh, polymer uh, uh, expectation with respect to the polymer measure with respect to the environment B bar. So taking log here and log here, we achieve this inequality, okay? So in order to finish, we wanted to prove that this is larger than minus uh, beta times something. So let's just continue, uh, could, uh, consider the absolute value and about it from above. So the absolute value of this age, this is by definition exactly that, okay? And now you can just sum up on all possible values of, uh, of your Poisson process and take everything, uh, take the, the expectation with respect to the polymer measure inside. Okay, now use Cauchy-Schwarz again. And what you pick up here is exactly the distance of age and what you have here, um, you can think about it as exactly the uh, square root of this uh, overlap time, right? Because uh, this is the probability that xs equals k squared, which is like the probability of two independent uh, guys equal k at time s. Okay, so it's, it's fairly simple as you see, uh, but it's very, very useful. So. Um, let, uh, let's see how, how, um, how to do that. So, um, yeah, questions so far? Uh, anyone is still with me? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So I, I, uh, I, I remind you these these notations for these these uh, 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 scaled uh, versions of the of the overlaps and the and the polymer uh, measure, and um, uh, also you can check that with respect to this polymer measure, with respect to the environment B, you have this presentation also of two independent copies. Okay, this is exactly like you uh, compute. Actually, it is how you compute uh, uh, the second moment of, of Z with the right descaling. Okay, so I can, can just check that. And, and now for, uh, for uh, K larger than zero, we can um, consider an event um, on environments. And it's going to be to have two, uh, two parts. The first part, it's going to be intersection of two events. The first event, is we want that the, the rescaled partition function in environment B is uh, not too far from its expectation. Okay, so it's larger than one half for, of the one half the expectation, which is reasonable. Another thing that, that we want is that the uh, this uh, expected uh, overlap with respect to B, okay, is smaller than k square root of n and uh, as I explained before, the right um, rescaling for this, you need to divide by square root of n for it to converge to something. So for k large, this also should have a, a, a large probability. And uh, indeed, the, the lemma here is that for any t and a, you in k large enough, you can find a delta, a function of these, so that, um, this uh, event a n has a probability larger than delta uniformly in n and for every in, in uniformly in x smaller than a in absolute one. Okay, so this is going to be the set that we want to use um, the Talagans uh, lemma for. Okay. Now I don't have a lot of time, so let me <laughs> go over it quickly, very quickly. Um, so let's see why this is uh, this has a probability bounded from below. So remember, this is the intersection of these two events. I changed a bit uh, the event just to make sure that it's easier to work with, but uh, uh, this is the same. So I told you here that uh, this relation. Um, so uh, yeah, so I just wrote the same thing. And now uh, on the event that uh, Zn is larger than one half its uh, expected value, the annealed expected value, we can uh, uh, bound this from below by just subtracting, uh, being called, instead, of, uh, instead of Zn squared, we can just take the expectation square and need to pay a quarter here on this event. So it's, it's okay. And then let's call this event U and this event V. So uh, then, of course, this is larger than the probability of u minus one plus the probability of v, which is nothing else but just saying that the probability of u union v is smaller or equal than one. Okay, I didn't use anything more than that. And um, and what we are going to show is that the probability of u is larger below uh, is is larger than a constant. And the probability of the complement of V is going, is going to be bounded by a constant divided by K. In particular, it will go to zero as K goes to infinity. So altogether, if we take K large enough uh, and we know these constants, um, then we can fix our Delta. We can find our Delta. Okay. So let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Uh, so the first part, the U part, so this is the probability for U. This follows from the paley zygmunt uh, inequality. The paley zygmunt inequality is telling you that this probability, that this larger than one half its expectation is larger than one quarter, uh, the, the ratio of the, uh, the square of the, of the, um, uh, the first moment divided by the second moment. And as we see, as we saw in the in the uh, uh, overlap estimate, we have this bound uniform. Okay, 
So this, the first part is done, right? So we have this. And now we want to go to the um, complement of V and to bound it. So this is the complement of, the probability of the complement of V. So we have a larger here and Markov's inequality. Okay, so we have just the expectation of that and whatever we have here. And remember that beta n is n to the minus one quarter. So beta n squared is n to the minus one half. Okay. Um, and then you just do a Fubini and you take the, the expectation with respect to the environment inside. So you don't care about the Poisson process and you take it all the way here. And then we have again, the, the game of, uh, of overlap. So you can express it in terms of the overlap. And uh, this cancels exactly with this um, uh, normalization constant. And we, this is now the second estimate that we had for the random walk or for the Poisson process for the overlap. This is bounded by a constant divided by two. Okay. So as I explained now, taking K large enough, if you fix your A and T, you, you, are, you, got, you got this length. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, let's put everything together. So I have two more slides for, to end the proof. So hold on. Um, now let's see how to, to, uh, to do that. Yeah. So uh, remember that if B, um, uh, B equals B bar plus an H, from age one, we have this inequality, this, this lower bound, right? Uh, that was the lemma. Now notice that if our B bar is chosen from this nice event, that, then um, we know how to uh, control this guy here. That was the, the V part from in the probability. Okay? So this is going to be in particular larger than the square root of K, uh, the norm of age. And the log two here is just coming from the, the one half, okay? So it's good. And, uh, and, uh, and yes, and now uh, remember the definition of the, of, the, of the distance function. So the distance function was, we want to uh, take the infimum over all the norms of, of these ages, right? So in particular, what you can do is you can, now um, switch the norm of H by uh, the distance function to a n. And look what happens. So now we have everything. We don't have a B and B bar. We have everything in terms of B. Okay, so we have this relation, this bound just in terms of B. And now you can define constants if you can define them like that. So uh, C delta, is coming from the good old uh, uh, Talagans lemma um, and our K here. So if you choose these two constants, what you realize from this inequality only is that the, 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 the event of the logarithm of, of Zn is smaller than the logarithm of the uh, expectation of Zn minus capital C minus small c times u. Um, this is contained in the event that the distance function, not just from this, is larger than this expression. And the constants were chosen in such a way that this is going to be exactly C delta plus U. Okay, you can check. Therefore, uh, okay, just take an exponent. The probability of this event is just bounded above by the probability of this event with the distance, and this follows just from the Lagrange lemma. Now you can you can say that I cheated a bit because there was no expectation in the in the lemma, but I already told you that you can somehow you can easily control this uniformly uh, this the expectation of Cn. So okay, modulo that uh, you, you you got the, the proof. Okay, so. That's the end of the proof. And since I gave you a lot of content, let me briefly um, take one minute and give you again the, the, the proof steps. Okay, so let's see what we had. So our goal was to, to control moments of 
the logarithm of the uh, rescaled stationary partition function. And we reduced ourselves to uh, positive and negative moments of this guy, of the partition function itself, not the log. And the positive part was straightforward. The negative uh, part um, was, uh, we reduced it to the negative, the negative moments, the fourth moment in this case of the point to point partition function. Now we work on the point to point for partition function and we prove uh, um, um, a Gaussian, uh, Gaussian tail, uh, Gaussian lower tail for that. How we do that? We use Talagan method. So we consider a Wiener space of environments that has this nice Talagan's lemma. So the Talagan's uh, Gaussian devi uh, deviation estimates for this uh, Cameroon Martin or Gersan of distance. Okay, and this is, as I explained, this is very general. Um, and here it was proven in, in the Malyavan uh, formalism, but we use it uh, uh, as a black box here. We used it as a black box. And then uh, we use a random walk or person person presentation to first control the ratio of two partition functions with different noises, different Brownian motions in terms of their overlap and the noise distance, okay, this H. So B and B bar in terms of this uh, 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 distance. And the second thing that we, that we use random walk presentation for is to control the deviation from the mean in terms of the overlap time using paley zygmunds inequality. Um, then uh, we estimate the overlap for the random walk locally uniformly. And so that's it. And note that that's the only place where we add the uniform bounds uh, so we got our uniform bound just from the uniform bounds of the random walk. And then we used it to identify a good event, this AN of environments uh, with probability bounded away from zero. And then we extract Gaussian bound by reducing to the distance of the, of the, of the good event, from the good event and apply Talagrand's uh, lemma for that, okay? Okay, that was uh, that is the end. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Tal. Any questions? So I, I have one question. So in, in general mixed stocks, we also saw a partition, so, so aging functions for non-stationary processes. So how, I mean, the proof here shows that, that it is enough to show, uh, to give concentration bounds essentially, right? So how is it done when you don't have all of these nice tools uh, and, uh, and, oh, and... Okay. Um, okay, so first, I don't know specifically about the model, the, the super Brownian motion, but then I don't, and, and I don't have a discrete model in mind, but um, um, yeah, but notice that we didn't use, in the end, our proof uh, was not about stationarity, right? We just show, so in a way you can say that we formulated, uh, we formulated it in, in, in such a way, but our proof was the concentration of the point-to-point -point partition function, right. which has nothing to do with stationarity. But, but you do um, use this covariance-to-variance formula, right? Which uh... Uh, okay, uh, yeah. And one and another thing that you can do, um, since this is uniform on, on, on compact, and you can mm -hmm. actually realize um, that you don't need. What you can do is instead of fixing your t you can prove it also uniformly on compacts in T because all mm -hmm. the estimates are following from the random walk and it will be okay. Um, so in, in a sense, you don't need to use the covariance to variance formula. Mm -hmm. You can just fix your, uh, you know, two times, two space points, and then you have your compact set and you prove all of these concentrations over there and you don't, you don't use stationarity at all. Okay. Um, I have also some questions. First, uh, the Talagon method, <clears throat> as far as I know, you can apply it when you have Gaussianity, right? It's, uh, mm -hmm. Gaussianity. So, so here you're using the, the Gaussian structure somehow underneath your, your 
exactly. All right, your, your model is not Gaussian, but you have some Gaussian um, ingredient, and you use that. Mm -hmm. right? uh -huh. So, right, and all the other, so that's the only, is it the only place where you use Gaussianity? Is, in this uh, plant, it seems it's like other yeah. things, like I, so a reduction yeah. to moments, this seems to be yeah. quite, okay. Yeah, yeah, so the point is that if you, if you have this, so there is Talagrand's lemma also in, in finite dimensions for non-Gaussian, non uh, you don't need necessarily uh, Gaussianity, but, but so as long as you can formulate such a such a Gaussian estimate in terms of distances. Uh, okay. so is it the grand lemma for non-Gaussian processes or? or um, okay, I, I don't remember exactly the formulation, but I think that there should be something at least in the finite dimensional case. Uh, it's enough to have log Sobolev. It's enough to have to have what log, log, log sobolev. Log sobolev. Yes. Yes. You don't need Gaussian. And 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 actually, Tal, I think you use Gaussian also when you reduce to the intersection local time. Um. I mean, you would get something slightly different if it were not Gaussian. Uh, yeah, it's true, but but it's true about the computation. But I think that the, the behavior, I mean, you, you just need to I be agree. able to. I agree. I agree. What I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, one comment. Uh, the technique is very particularly robust. In other words, Tal presented as your O'Connor model. Okay. And the beauty about it that we know in the in this model that we have stationarity, but uh, from the viewpoint of the concentration. Uh, if you think about, if you replace the Poisson process by the simple random walk, then you are, of course, for the PAM, parabolic Anderson model. So this would just work. So the concentration business properly rescaled, then you, of course, you will converge not to the local time of the, uh, the rescaled local time of the, of the tilted Poisson process converged to the local time of the Brownian motion. And that would be the case, of course, if you do with a simple random walk. So in other words, this part is robust that we believe it will just work uh, through for the, the PAM. So, so uh, which part you say would, would work also for the Anderson model? I mean, not if you properly small noise, the small noise the PAM, so beta of n, n to the minus one fourth, Okay. You don't, then you don't have to tilt it. We'll also converge to the stochastic heat equation. Mm -hmm. And the concentration uh, at least point to point will also work because, well, of course, you have to deal all of the computation. But basically, every time you, have, you look at the overlap from the Poisson process, you would have to look at the overlap of the, of the uh, simple random one. That would possibly work. What is missing, and this is the reason why we haven't solved it yet, is, is, is this principal ingredient that you're in a stationary phase. Ah. Stationary regime. The stationary regime, by the way, is, was just about how to deal with the asymptotic of the correlation of the covariances. And if you wish, what we're using here, we can reduce asymptotic of the covariance to asymptotics of the variance. Now, yes. the, the point is that in a narrow edge regime, they can also deal with it. And if you look at Corbin and Hammond, and what is the third co author? Uh, Goshal. Goshal. They, they can deal with it, but it's, 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 oh, it's heavily relies on, on much more information. It's, it's a I see. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and also to add that uh, uh, when that they get only bound because well, it's hard to show that, that they show that this is the right rate, but they, it's, it's not clear what is the, um, the explicit aging function there. What should be the aging function? Okay, so thanks for this uh, input. Any other questions? Yeah, so uh, tell, uh, there, is, there, is a, there is a proof of concentration in a slightly, but related, slightly different, but, uh, but maybe related uh, context that, that Yugu was doing also using Malyavin calculus. Are you, can you say something about the relation or are you? I'm I'm uh, I'm not aware of that. Uh, okay. Maybe my maybe my co-authors. Uh, okay, Gloria is also here. No. Okay. No. Okay. 
in, in, a seri- in, in, se- in several papers. Uh, Oh, he used okay. this technique, so so I was wondering um, because it, it, uh, it it's not the same, but it's uh, it's also using Malyavin derivative and control of Malyavin derivatives in order to get uh, estimates. But, and and on which uh, on which model? Uh, the stochastic model? heat equation. Oh. <laughs> okay, I see. No, okay. Not unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I will check that. Thanks for the for the info. Yeah, know. we can communicate by mail. Okay. Okay, so I think that's a good point to stop. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Tal and Jan Dominic, for this nice talk. Thank you. We meet again, the seminar meets again next Tuesday, uh, but uh, it will be in the afternoon. An announcement will, will go out, of course, but uh, it will be an unusual hour to accommodate uh, people from the other side of the globe. Uh, so stay tuned. See you then. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.